हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर हिमांशु अरोड़ा फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ एंथ्रोपोलॉजी यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ डेली टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी ए मॉड्यूल टाइटल्ड फंक्शनिंग ऑफ लोकल पंचायत्स फ्रॉम द पेपर रिसर्च मेथड्स एंड फील्ड वर्क लेट स्टार्ट विद द लर्निंग ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ द मॉड्यूल आफ्टर गोइंग थ्रू दिस मॉड्यूल यू वुड बी एबल टू कॉम्प्रिहेंड मीनिंग एंड हिस्टोरिकल बैकग्राउंड ऑफ पंचायत्स you'll learn the objective structure and functions of panchayats in india you'll uh, understand the present scenario and role of women in the panchayats and you will understand their anthropological perspective of panchayati raj institutions first of all let us briefly discuss about the meaning of panchayat panchayat literally means assembly of five wise and respected elders chosen and accepted by the village community it is derived from the word, sanskrit word panchayat meaning five members or panchas or ayatnam meaning place or office these five members are sacred in indian mythology as they are considered as the five representatives of god who are called panchayatni in sanskrit that is ganpati vishnu shankar devi and surya these five gods together constitute the supreme power thus the panch constitutes the parmeshwar the great god of justice who is infallible in other words panchayat is a village council or a local self government system acting as an instrument of socio economic transformation in rural india this module illustrates the history of panchayats it would also emphasize on the objective structure and functioning of the panchayat system in india the role of women in panchayati raj institutions is also a part of this module most important it will also take into account the present scenario of the functioning of panchayats in india and a few anthropological studies of panchayati raj institutions first of all we'll see what is panchayat a historical perspective panchayats had existed in india from the earliest times of vedic period which dates back to approximately 1200 bc they continue to exist even during the medieval mughal and british periods however mahatma gandhi's vision of village self governance and a decentralized form of government government has much influence in the development of panchayats in india taking forward the idea of mahatma gandhi way back in 1950 pandit jawahar lal nehru gave recognition to the system after independence panchayats were included in the article 40 of the indian constitution which reads the states shall take steps to organize village panchayat and endow them with such power and authority as may be necessary to enable them to function as units of self government thereafter many committees including the committee headed by balwant rai mehta in 1957 ashok mehta in 1978 g v k rao lm singhvi in 1986 observed the local absence of local self governance and need of strengthening it further however in 1992 73rd and 74th amendment acts of the indian constitution were amended to revive the panchayati raj institution the 73rd and 74th constitutional constitution amendment acts in india uh, says that panchayats and municipal municipalities will be institutions of self government basic units of democratic system gram sabhas and ward committees comprising all adult members registered as voters three tier system of panchayats at village intermediate block or taluka or mandal and district levels smaller states with population below 2 million will have only two tiers now let us see the salient features of the acts seat at all levels should be filled by direct election seat reserved for scheduled caste and scheduled tribes chairperson of the panchayats at all the level also shall be reserved for scheduled caste and scheduled tribes in proportion to their population one third of the total population number of seats reserved for women one third of the seats reserved for scheduled caste and scheduled tribes also uh, reserved for women one third offices of chairperson at all level should be reserved for women uniform five year term and election to constitute new bodies that are to be completed before the expiry of the term in the event of dissolution elections to be held compulsory within 6 uh, months now we'll uh, talk about the objectives of panchayati raj 
The major objective behind establishing the panchayat system is to take democracy to the village level by delegating powers to the people at the grassroots level. Members of a panchayat are more familiar to the region specific problems and thus they are capable of taking a more informed decision in favor of the people of their village or tehsil. Moreover, it develops a cordial relation between the panchayat members and the villagers which acts as a medium of putting forth their views and opinion with confidence and seek solutions. Panchayats have a high degree of accountability before the people and the common people have become more conscious of their rights. The panchayat also works towards the socio-economic welfare and development of the area taking into consideration the needs of the people. Now, let us try to understand the structure and function of the panchayat. Previously, panchayats were used to settle disputes between individuals and village, but now panchayats also address key issues of welfare and overall reconstruction, development and maintenance of the assets and resources of the villages. Indian government has decentralized several administrative functions to the village level, empowering elected panchayats at three levels or tiers. The three tier panchayat system is Gram Panchayat at village level, Panchayat Samiti at block level and Zilla Parishad at district level. Gram Panchayat or village Panchayat is considered as the primary unit of Panchayati Raj institutions which operates at the village level. A Gram Panchayat is constituted of a population between 3000 to 5000 covering a group of villages. An elected head of Gram Panchayat is known as Sarpanch or Pradhan. The main function of the Gram Panchayat is to promote economic and social welfare, education and health in the Gram Panchayat. It is the responsibility of a Sarpanch to take stock of the infrastructural development of the region, tax collection and public health and hygiene. The head of the Gram Panchayat regularly convenes meetings on various issues. Block Panchayat or the Panchayat Samiti is a form of Panchayati Raj that works for the villages of the Tehsil that are called development block. Panchayat Samitis is composed of MPs and MLAs of the area and other elected members. The official members are the block development officer and officers of various state government department at the block level. The main functions of the Panchayat Samitis are planning, execution and supervision of all the developmental block programs in the block. Block Panchayats are empowered to supervise the activities of Gram Panchayats in their jurisdiction. Block Panchayats take care of important departments such as finance, public work, health, education and IT. Each department is headed by an individual officer who is accountable before the Block Development Officer. The Panchayat is elected for five years while the members of the Panchayat are elected directly by the people. The Panchayat Samiti members are elected by the Panchayats. District Panchayat or the Zilla Parishad Each district has a district Panchayat consisting of members of Parliament and the Legislature from within the district, the members of Block Panchayats in the district and elected members in accordance with the scale of one member for 40,000 of the population. Zilla Parishad had an IAS officer as the administrative head the members of the Zilla Parishad mainly comprise of MPs elected from that particular district. The various rural development work carried at the villages, gram panchayats, block and district levels are planned, implemented, monitored and maintained by the Zilla Parishads. Zilla Parishad supervises the work of Panchayat Samiti as well as gram panchayat within its jurisdiction. Its focus mainly on education, health and agricultural segment. Besides, Zilla Parishad is also entrusted with the duty of inspiring entrepreneurial spirit and implementing employment schemes. A major chunk of their revenue comes in the form of grants from the state government panchayat along with the earnings from taxes on water, tourism and markets. Gram Sabha is a statutory body of Gram Panchayat. The Gram Sabha is the most powerful foundation of decentralized governance by ensuring elected representatives. 
it is obligatory on the part of the gram panchayat to convene gram sabha meeting at least once in 6 months all the adults who are in the voters list of village are the members of the gram sabha the gram sabha is directly and regularly accountable to the people the quorum for a gram sabha meeting is 1/10th and it is essential to have one third of quorum as women members the gram sabha works as a supervisory body and audit and regulate the functioning of gram panchayats the recommendations made in the gram sabha are binding on the gram panchayat the gram sabha can improve as well as audit expenditure up to a limit of 3 lakhs the gram sabha has the right to recall the sarpanch or pradhan after 2 and 1/2 years of commencement of his or her tenure the key responsibilities of the gram sabha are micro planning social audit of panchayat function certification of panchayat accounts balance sheets identification and approval of beneficiaries and supervisory and regulatory functions the functions of the panchayats apart from the usual function of organizing cultural activities markets and fairs sanitation women and child development welfare of sc st and physically handicapped etc are in the sectors of agriculture animal husbandry dairying and poultry fisheries social and farm forestry minor forest produce fuel and fodder khadi village and cotton industries rural housing drinking water roads buildings bridges ferries waterways and other means of communication rural electrification non conventional energy source poverty alleviation programs education including primary schools adult and formal education and libraries now we will talk about functioning of panchayats a current scenario certainly development of villages depends heavily on panchayati raj institution and their effective functioning and that can be achieved through participation of the different stakeholders at different stages of development process however various studies have shown that panchayats are running inefficiently and there is total lack of people's participation in the absence of measures to strengthen public systems at the local level panchayats are facing problems in promoting development due to existing malaise of bureaucracy and politics which hinders effective implementation of programs several initiatives including reservation for women conducting social audit micro planning at grassroots level etc have been taken to strengthen the panchayati raj institution by the state and central government as well but still many of these initiatives have not been implemented in true letter and spirit the section elucidate the current status of function transfer to the pris in the wake of 73rd amendment to examine whether the resources transferred to them are adequate to perform these functions and fulfill their responsibilities and to suggest ways of improving their financial health one of the major constraints of proper functioning of local panchayats in india is finance this greatly affects the decentralization of functions to the panchayats increasing functions means increasing needs for resources but the records on transfer of funds to panchayats for the subjects involved upon them is not encouraging many of the powers given to local bodies are delegated powers and most state governments have retained substantial financial and administrative power which suppress the autonomy of pris major areas of rural development expenditure and funds associated with them are kept out of the purview of the locally elected bodies the local government should have the freedom of selecting and implementing their own programs for which they should have the freedom to raise funds independently to improve the financial positions of panchayati raj institutions mccarten and yasulu suggested enlarging the share of untied grants in transfers adopting an equalization formula for allocation of grants increasing own and assigned sources of tax revenue and offering matching grants to induce own tax efforts they also suggest transferring a fixed percentage of all state taxes to provide stability to local governments and flexibility to state government 
it is also necessary that transfer allocations are available to local government on a timely basis. Successful implementation of rural program depends also on an effective delivery and monitoring system. Therefore, it also needs to be strengthened. Inadequacy of staff has also affected the functioning of Panchayati Raj institutions. Staff cost can be reduced by maintaining core professional staff and drawing local expertise. Moreover, it is also observed that the Panchayat elections are not being regularly held in various states. Although every state has implemented mandatory reservation criteria of women, but the problem has been observed as husband, representation of women Panchayat representative, it negates overall process of women empowerment. In India, there are many best performing Panchayats in various states who have been recognized for their positive endeavor such as solar power, plants, and lights, rain, water harvesting, tribal rehabilitation, etc. in Tamil Nadu and Kerala. Therefore, there is urgent need to re remove the legislative and procedural problems that constrain the Gram Sabha, greater devolution of funds, functions and functionaries, proper mechanisms of audit and accountability and strengthening the participation of women for improving governance and functioning of panchayats. Measures are thereby needed that the poor can participate more effectively through Panchayati Raj institutions and local informal groups and people's involvement movement. Women in local panchayats. Women participation in political field has gone up sharply in past decades. Mandating one third reservation for women is in membership as well as in the position of chairpersons of panchayat at all three levels have given an opportunity for women to take the position of leadership. Today, rural women are able to participate in the decision-making process. The emergence of these institutions has brought governance closer to the people. Earlier, participation of women in Panchayati Raj institutions was a matter of concern in terms of the substance and effectiveness of representation. Local communities insufficiently represented women. Women were rarely the heads of the panchayats. Thus, the 73rd Constitution Amendment Act in India has been passed to assure women's representation in India, Indian Panchayati Raj system. However, women members of panchayats need to be educated and informed about politics, their rights, the nature of Indian democracy, policies and programs for women, and the underprivileged and voting rights. In a study by the Center for Women Development Studies in 1999, it was revealed that 95% of women surveyed, surveyed believed that they would not have been elected had it not been for the reservation. Chandrasekhar and Kadam observed that though Panchayati Raj institutions in areas of Shivamoga, Karnataka comprised of young and educated women but they are dependent to a large extent on the support of their husbands and other family members. They mainly took the decision to contest and campaign and the majority of the women's husband attend the meetings and take overall decision. Thus, only representation of women does not mean women empowerment. They must get greater social and political exposure so that they can be dynamic in active politics. Proper educational facilities and other skill development is also another requisite. There should be thorough transformation in attitude and mindset. It is only then the process of women empowerment through political representation becomes meaningful and realistic. Now, anthropological perspective of Panchayati Raj system. There is a plethora of anthropological studies on the different aspects of Panchayati Raj institutions, structures and functioning. While some scholars have studied the concept and history of Panchayat system, others have focused on the structure and functioning of the Panchayats. Many have also studied the role of women in Panchayats some of the works of eminent scholars and authors are also discussed in this regard. Structure and functioning of panchayat systems are manifold. Kanna in 1966 studied the structure and function, finances and the working of Panchayati Raj in Punjab and Haryana. Maheshwari in 1971 described the structure, personal finance and functioning of rural as well as urban local government. This also encompasses the criticism of the functioning of local panchayats as well as gram sabhas. It is known 
fact that though the system has been strengthened but still there is something which needs to be fixed effective monitoring system accountability funds flow skilled manpower people's participation and awareness are some of the factors which greatly affect the functioning of the local self government just like Heber in 1999 who has found that the gram sabhas are not held properly and the attendance in most of the gram sabhas is very poor ray in 1994 has also made an attempt to analyze the role of local institutions in mobilizing the rural poor for development and change through implementation of various anti poverty programs bhargava and venkat krishnan have studied in uh, on the effective participation of the people in their local affairs democratic decentralization brijesh pati tripathi and praveen kumar in the year 1993 have stressed that democracy is never complete unless there is at every level active involvement and participation of the people similarly mahipal in 1993 attempted to evaluate the panchayati raj institutions in the state of haryana for reasons of better performance in agricultural activities in this he has given considerable attention to decentralized planning and people's participation in the planning process moreover mathayan in 2011 has stated that though the need of decentralized governance in the state have now begun to develop but the present pattern and process of governance in the state is still at crossroads and has a long way to go before it attains maturity likewise devendra babu in 1991 has analyzed the functions of the panchayats and reported that panchayats have an edge over bureaucratic decision making and implementation of the rural development programs singh and yadav in 2010 had suggested that right to information should be used extensively to bring transparency in panchayati raj institutions and to break the nexus between the politicians and the bureaucrats panchayati raj institutions and development program panchayati raj institutions are the grassroots institutions for rural and community development singhvi in year 18 1987 has emphasized that the panchayati raj institutions should be closely involved in planning and implementation of rural development programs at the lower level well horoy uh, in uh, 2011 studied on gram panchayat he pointed out that gram panchayats are now more concerned with taking up rural employment programs however there was less support that the scheme has also promoted more people's participation in the functioning of the local governing body and gram sabha meetings are more meaningful than before women's role in panchayati raj institution as an anthropologist it is important to focus on gender equality and the role and status of women in all fields earlier the role of women in panchayati raj was in a state of vacuum and the women were not adequately empowered to play an effective role because of social economic and political factors however due to reservation the trend has been changed now women are being organized reorganized in the political sphere of india shah in 1989 has discussed about reservation for women and especially for women belonging to scheduled castes and scheduled tribes on panchayati raj bodies palanthurai in 2001 in his study of tamil nadu observed that women have occupied current positions in the local bodies as provisions have been made in the constitution the outlook of the society towards women has started changing nevertheless the ground situation is somewhat different though there has been a reservation for women in the panchayats but that doesn't imply their political empowerment in some states and villages now also they have subordinated and dominated by their counterparts in decision making participating in development programs attending meetings etc koshik and shakavat in 2010 have found out that indian society especially the rural society has a clear bias against women we must women are subordinated in family which in turn extend their subordination in their wider society economy and polity let us summarize what we have learned in this module till now today panchayati raj system has attained a universal position the constitution of india visualizes panchayats as institution of self governance 
the main objective behind the panchayati raj is that the people in the village should understand the responsibilities of governing themselves pioneer rural sociologist a r desai spelled the objectives of panchayati raj system as follows panchayati raj is claimed as a real democratic political apparatus which would bring the masses into active political control from the vast majority of the weaker poor sections of rural india the whole idea of this scheme is based on the dictum that rural development is for the rural people of the rural people and by the rural people themselves this scheme of rural development confers on the rural people the power of decision making regarding developmental activities this is democracy at the grassroots level that is decentralized democracy panchayats have got a very important role to play in the social economic and cultural life of the village community of india however the competitive elections have politicized the environment of all the villages as a result the power and functions vested to the panchayats vary from state to state which greatly affects the functioning and delivery of services to the villagers but this does not in any way undermine the importance of panchayats in a vast country like indian panchayat truly constitute an important basis of governance thank you